um, good evening to everyone, especially to the students who are, who are enrolled in these subjects because this is an additional subject for the curriculum for the criminology. Um, many students will think about the circumstances beyond the act of cyber crime, cyber crime. Because there are also laws that is similar with regards to the implementation in which the students is misguided with their interpretation. Just put into your mind to the students that in a commission of a crime, there is an element that will be required. That why, that's why it is very basic for you to understand the basic laws, especially in the revised penal code. Because that knowledge will be the key for the solution and interpretation of these laws. So, in cybercrime, the listed punishable acts under cybercrime is that it is very technical. And it is very hard for someone to prove that he or she or they violates cybercrime laws. That's why in the violation of the revised penal code, there are also cases. There are also cases that cybercrime will be used as a tool. For example, a cyber libel. Libel is punishable under the penal code. But likewise, if a libel of act was put into a medium of, medium of social connection, such as internet, then it will form as a cyber libel, in which violation of that law will be one degree higher of what the vice penal code requires. That's why there is, really an, there is a change if cybercrime will be a tool. And in the crimes of medicine and jobs and exposures, it is also divide, it is also punishable under the revised penal code. But likewise, as I said, if it will be if the cybercrime will be the tool of the tool in committing the laws, then it is it is an aggravating circumstances. If you commit that law. So, if we are going also, if we are also going to look into consideration the other laws provided. So, what will happen if the violates the violates photo and video reason and act, uh, Republic Act 995, an act defining penalizing the crime of photo and video reason prescribing penalties therefore and for other purposes or known as anti-photo and video voyeurism act so the problem would be like this what are the punishable acts of anti-photo video and voyeurism so the unlawful acts is to hire employ use persuade induce coerce a child to perform in a creation in the production of any child uh, pornography who is child? The child is any person who under 18 years of age who is not yet in the age of discretion. So, if there is also a person who is above 18 years old but he is not yet capable of making decision or he is, um, shall we say, an incapacitated one, so he's is presumed to be children even in his present age. So, and even person who is under 18 years of age perform this act with consent, it is still a violation. You will violate the Republic Act uh, 975. So, if we are going to connect this one, to the, um, the cybercrime cyber crime law in R.E.T. 175. It 
you are going to use cybercrime as a tool, then the violation will be uh, anti, you are violating the anti quote video video receiving act in relation to cybercrime, in which it is also an agreement in which committing cybercrime offenses will be, uh, you will violate one degree higher or the required. Uh, required required by law so it is really it is really very useful for us we and educators and criminology students who are aspiring to become police officers you need to study the boundaries of the law because the laws keep on innovating keep on amending as well as there are also technicalities that are going to consider. And one of the very big problems and difficulties in proving cybercrime is that there should be a technical officer that is only that can only be looked to the National Bureau of Investigation and to the PNP in the anti cybercrime group in which their offices is based in the regional office for example here in region 9 the uh, regional anti cybercrime office is located in sampaga city in sampaga city in which it is also um, the office of the pnp that will address problems with regards to cybercrime but it's not very easy because you if you are not going to follow the procedural aspects and implementation this of this law then you will also violate the data privacy act if there is a complaint now um, um, going back to the very basic when was the when was would be when would be the uh, complaint will be should be sufficient if there are cyber crime offenses happen so it will be sufficient if the identity of the offender is present, the place where it was committed, or in cybercrime where it was posted, there is a, um, a witness provided that is really that really identify the identity of the perpetrator. So who is that? Who will be the one to prove? So the technical aspects of implementing this law will be addressed by the National Bureau of Investigation as well as the cybercrime, the members of the anti-cybercrime group. That's why it is also the students nowadays very worthy for having this, um, this additional subjects in the curriculum of criminology in order for them, in order for them to visualize to visualize the things that happen nowadays in relation to cybercrime. So, um, as a guy, as also as a police officer, um, just continue to read, interpret, and understand what the law requires. Because if one of the requirements in constituting or making a complaint it will be it will lead or it will lead to the dismissal of the case so if you are not sure with regards to the laws you interpret just consult an expert especially lawyers and to guide you for what is given by the law and what is required by the law so that's all I can say for additional knowledge to our viewers for the Just subscribe. Just click the subscribe button in order for us to value uh, the time that I shared to this page.